My name is Maurice Gaston. I'm a mobility counselor here at Metropolitan Baltimore Quarter. I've been with the company since January of 2008. MBQ was created from the Taunton Settlement and uh, through a partnership with HABC and Quad L Consulting, uh, we were able to administer a voucher program that gave families the opportunity to move to um, areas that have better school districts, safer neighborhoods, and also higher quality housing. As a counselor here at MBQ, um, it is our job to um, pretty much help the clients get to the point of living in a high opportunity area. So what we do is we walk them through a series of workshops um, from the application process to the lease, leasing process. And we hold their hand and guide them through that process. So that's one of the jobs we do here at MBQ. Um, with those workshops or specific workshops, um, we work on professionalism. Uh, we also work on credit or anything else that will give them the best opportunity in front of a landlord to be able to lease in the higher opportunity areas. As defined in the settlement, um, a high opportunity area is considered less than 10% uh, poverty and less than 30% minority population. Some of these services that we do provide for the clients um, post lease up or after they've uh, lived in their house. Um, we have partnered up with Vehicles for Change, which gives um, the head of household um, that is working uh, the opportunity to purchase a car, and they have to be working at least 30 hours a week in order to qualify for that particular program. And it allows them um, the flexibility of transportation to be able to drive to their job or to seek other jobs. So that's one of the partnerships that we've made in the program. Along with Vehicles for Change, through um, other funding, we've been able to pay for driving school. So we can pay up to 75% of driving school for those that are seeking to get their driver's license um, and be able to be mobile, which allows more flexibility when it comes to uh, jobs and also travel to their, to their house. Um, we've also, uh, uh, the director is actually on a board, uh, we do a, what's called the MARA Scholarship for those that are um, looking to pursue education and it doesn't necessarily have to be a university. Um, it could be a trade school um, or any type of certification um, and we provide that opportunity for our clients. Through this process, as far as the, the settlement, um, we've partnered with the ABLE Foundation which have provided funds for uh, various activities. Uh, one of the biggest things are security deposit. So through our program and for first time movers and now second time movers, they have access to security deposit assistance in some of the more expensive areas. And also um, in the summertime, we've been able to assist a few families with the cost of summer camp, which um, can also be very expensive in the high, what we consider high opportunity areas, or usually the counties that are a little bit more affluent where summer camp may cost more money. We've been able to assist some families with uh, funds for summer camp. In the process, um, anyone who wishes to receive a housing choice voucher, they have to apply for the program. Um, our applications have changed because the criteria has changed as far as who is eligible. But uh, if you fit any of the, the basic criteria, if you've been um, on the waiting list uh, since 1995, if you've been in public housing or you're a current resident of public housing, you may qualify for our program and they've also opened the criteria up to Baltimore City residents. With the Baltimore City residents, they may also now qualify for the program. So the criteria is actually opened up. Um, once they apply for the program, they receive a, um, a notification to let them know that they, they actually qualify or are now put onto our waiting list. Uh, once you're put on the waiting list, you wait for an invite to come into an orientation. The orientation gives an overview of the program, um, just some pointers or general information about the program. And once participants uh, sit through the orientation, they are then um, put on what we consider a plan to get your voucher, which means they may have to attend a few workshops based on a general assessment done by our workshop team. Um, some of those workshops may include uh, credit counseling, uh, how to search for housing, also um, budgeting, which is a, a major uh, factor in whether you can afford to stay someplace and maintain. Um, we also do workshops for housekeeping because you know some clients may not know how to maintain a house so we do a home maintenance workshop and all these workshops are designed to prepare them for when they are going to attempt to look for a voucher. 
Um, we also have additional workshops that help with the uh, home search process, what to ask, what to say, how to uh, dress professionally and conduct yourself as professional as possible. Um, and once that process is done and we see that they're ready to receive their voucher through that process, um, they're referred to the voucher team and they actually sit through another workshop where we do their final paperwork um, to make sure that they officially still qualify for the program. So that means we're looking at background checks, we're looking at actual income um, to make sure that they still fit in the criteria um, according to HUD guidelines to actually receive a voucher. Uh, once that process is done, then um, they're invited to a workshop where we explain uh, where to search and how to conduct your search. And they actually um, are then assigned to counselors and also search assistants. Uh, the counselors help them through the process and the search assistants actually take them to the properties. So um, some clients actually get to go on an actual tour of some of the properties that are um, available to them. And um, if they're interested in a property, they fill out uh, paperwork. And once that paperwork is filled out, uh, we uh, make sure it's affordable. We make sure it's rent reasonable. And we also um, make sure it's in what we consider the allowable census track, uh, which is another part of the criteria of the program in a high opportunity area. Um, the unit is inspected. Once it's inspected, um, if they're approved, they can go ahead and move into the unit. Our voucher process or our what we do um, versus the typical housing authority is our voucher actually covers the surrounding jurisdictions of Baltimore City. Uh, the typical housing choice voucher, you can only lease in that particular county versus our voucher, we're able to jump counties without having to port the voucher into that um, housing authority. So it kind of cuts down on the time frame in which someone is uh, searching for a place. Um, another difference that we do have is uh, we have the additional resource of a computer lab. So with the computer lab, uh, the clients have access to come in and search for properties on their own and, um, and use that to, to help with their search. So that's another difference that we have when it comes to our voucher versus um, the typical voucher. Um, also, um, a very unique feature that um, Metropolitan Baltimore Cordell has is we have a counseling component which is different than the typical housing authority um, because the counseling component kind of adds um, additional help and services when it comes to uh, landlord mediation uh, we do a lot of that um, and also just helping with additional services especially for um, special if we have a special needs or a handicapped or disabled um, client we um, can provide additional services than the typical housing authority cannot provide. We actually have um, a landlord outreach team and their position or what their job is to actually look for potential landlords um, through uh, listings, real estate agents, or, or calling around. Uh, we explain the program and if they're interested, we then add them onto our list and refer the clients out um, to these landlords because they're already aware of the program. Um, another criteria that is unique um, to our program, focusing on uh, families moving to higher opportunity areas, we actually use the census tracts. The census tracts um, are based on uh, census data that's out there and it uh, tracks the, um, the income of the area, the demographics of the area, and what we find is certain census tracts have um, a mixed population or a diverse population also the education system tends to be better so anyone coming into our program we um, encourage that they stay in these areas to take advantage of the better school districts uh, the safer neighborhoods and also the well-maintained neighborhoods because those three things um, are uh, key for our family to be successful for our children to be successful and that's one of the reasons why this program was created so we make sure that any landlord that we come in contact with and that we refer out to clients or landlords that fit in that criteria as far as um, being in an opportunity area and the designated census tracts that we deem would be the best move for families. Given my position, um, I actually coordinate uh, second time moves. So um, when we do our initial, uh, when they initially lease up in our program, we ask them a series of questions because by asking these questions, we can figure out whether a family would stay or whether they would go. And then with the resources that we have, 
we then figure out if there's a resource that we can provide for a family, would they actually stay in what we consider a high opportunity area? And what we find is most families that are comfortable around other family members are usually the ones that tend to move back to Baltimore City because of a comfort level. Um, their, their family is nearby. They have um, you know, friends and family that could watch their children. They're familiar with the neighborhood. Um, so that, that's one of the biggest reasons why a lot of families end up moving back because of comfort level. Um, also, um, lack of transportation. Um, usually in the county, the bus lines may not run as frequently as they're used to in the city. So a lot of people who either uh, live in the city, used to live in the city or work in the city tend to move back to the city to have access to transportation because that's a little bit more convenient for them. Um, and that's another reason why they may uh, move back to Baltimore City. One of the uh, criteria and process that we deal with or that we do is post counseling and we do a series of home visits. And these home visits are designed to see how a family is adjusting. And in my experience, um, usually within four months, uh, most of the time I see the parents see an obvious change in their children. Um, I've had several people tell me uh, my child's vocabulary has increased. Uh, my child used to be a D student and now they're an A student. Uh, my child actually enjoys going to school. And a lot of these changes happen because the um, classroom sizes are probably smaller. Um, the classroom environment is probably more positive where a child would look forward to going to school. Um, they probably also feel safer in their neighborhood. So uh, overall comfort level, we see a drastic change in a matter of months. Um, also, um, as far as families are concerned, they're more likely if they have the tools to stay in the county because a mother who is focused on education sees the benefit of staying in the county and they'll try their best to stay where they are. Now we do have some that end up transitioning back to the city and because they've seen the positive side of staying in the county and they go back to the city, they then come back and say, I want to move back to the county because now my child is in a terrible school district or in a terrible neighborhood. And they saw the differences and those differences sometimes um, force families to make an adjustment or use the resources that we have available for them to then move back to uh, the county. Each census tract um, has a payment standard and a payment standard is also um, based on the type of house whether it be an apartment versus a single family a payment standard is based on actual bedroom size and location so certain locations in the county um, may be may have higher rent so our payment standard actually adjusts to those counties based on the census tract our highest payment standard that we have and that we were able to adjust to that most uh, programs can adjust to is Columbia because that's one of our more expensive areas. So we've been able to go above payment standard in areas like that where most programs they stay between 80 and 100 percent. We're able to go from 110 percent to 130 percent payment standard. So that's the difference um, with our program versus the, the typical program. Discrimination is kind of one of those things that we know can and does happen in the process. Um, we have partnered with Baltimore neighborhoods um, and if there is an issue, we encourage clients to report um, any levels of discrimination to Baltimore neighborhoods. A particular client that they moved to a very nice area and the daughter was on the volleyball team and the school volleyball team apparently is ranked. So that means the potential for scholarship. Uh, she was a, a A student and she had to move because of a, it was either a rental increase or something happened where she possibly had to move. And I was able to find a way for um, this parent to stay because I, I, I kind of felt for her. I felt like, you know, her daughter took advantage of the program she was in a better school district, she was active in school, and she had the potential to get a volleyball scholarship. So I kind of took it personal, like I have to do everything in my power to allow this family to be able to stay in this area. And I was able to uh, you know, make, make it happen pretty much and allow her to be able to stay in that area. So that really, stories like that kind of happen frequently where 
um, you know, someone really wants to, to that, that American dream or uh, allow the opportunity for their child to be able to be successful. And I've been able to help um, several families to be able to remain in an area, or at least if they had to move, move to an area where they can continue to be successful. Thank you.